Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the Noche necktie from the Noche collection from Edgar Alejandro at Masonic Revival. I like it a lot. It has uh, squares and compasses and several other symbols hidden in it, but because it's black, I can wear it to black tie only events like some of our Scottish Rite reunions and other places, or if you just want to be extra formal. We're in the Fellowcraft degree, and you've been presented with the first working tool of a Fellowcraft, the square. And now we're going to uh, talk about and hint at, if you will, another working tool for a Fellowcraft, and we do so by reciting a scripture, which is found in the seventh and eight verses in the seventh chapter of the book of Amos. And it reads Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. So if you're not familiar with what a plumb line actually is, we're talking about a weight. Generally it's shaped in a cone type of fashion made out of brass or another heavy metal suspended by a string. And what it allows you to do is elevate that string from a high level or any level and let the plumb bob down below until it rests and the line between wherever you're holding it up top and where the plumb line rests below you can be assured is a straight line and so here in this example we have the Lord standing with an actual plumb line in his hand so you can picture him holding a string with a, a plumb line in his hand and he asks Amos what do you see and Amos replies back with perhaps the obvious thing what he physically sees happening which is the Lord holding a plumb line so he replies back simply a plumb line but then as happens so much in the scriptures uh, Christ responds back that it's more of a parable type of situation where he says behold I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel I will not again pass by them anymore and with that we can start to try to think more about the symbolic nature of what this plumb line might be and what the Lord might mean by putting a plumb line in the midst of his people Israel and I think that the generally accepted thing here is uh, my, what might first come to mind which is simply that if a plumb line can be used to make a true wall that is sturdy then we can use a plumb line to make people who are moral and true and give them that same example to be able to say hey look you need to act like this plumb line does you need to set something in yourself that says this is my center this is where I am at this is how I maintain myself to be a true and upright person and I've heard different examples of this uh, in fact my own worshipful master uh, gave a little education piece where he offered up his own opinion he wasn't uh, teaching us this in in the sense of like a Bible study situation but he offered up his own opinion on what this meant to him personally and he said that to him it meant about the coming of Christ and how Christ operates as that plumb line that it was his example of how to act and behave that was being set in the midst of the people Israel to say this is the way that you should be and of course the rest of that we can go to scripture about what it means not to pass by them anymore so you can take that for however you want to read it. I'm sure we can use the example of a plumb line in many different religions and think about how individuals from those religions also could have operated to their individual cu cultures as a plumb line. Something that people could rally around and say, hey, this person lives their life in a way that I find to be virtuous and true, and so we as a people need to be able to act like this. So the second working tool that you're not told is a working tool, but that you are introduced to in the Fellowcraft degree is a plumb line. 
So uh, I hope that there is something that you can take away from that. We'll talk a little bit more about the working tools a little bit later on. Uh, we have already discussed uh, in previous videos, especially back in the Entered Apprentice degree, that not every jurisdiction uses these scriptures uh, at the very beginning of the ceremony or ritual of any degree. Um, but I think that we all use the plum in some way. So for topic of discussion, if you would, in the comments below, uh, similar to the square, tell me about what the plumb line means to you. Is there a certain way that you think about it and apply it to your daily life? Uh, is there a certain lesson or example or explanation that's been given you given to you in the past that really uh, stuck? It really meant something to you. And if so, I would encourage you to share that down below so that everybody watching the video can scroll through and learn from each other. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch, and we will next talk specifically about the working tools, and there are three of them, and we'll flesh out a little bit about what in the ritual is actually explained as the meaning and use behind these operative tools here in speculative masonry. We'll see you next time. Bye.